Breaking news here on CBS Sports HQ in golf where Open champion Cameron Smith has officially left the PGA Tour to join Live Golf. He's the headliner among six new additions to the Saudi back tour, including fellow Australian Mark Leishman, Joaquin Neiman, and Harold Varner III. They will make their debuts later this week when the Live Series heads to the International in Boston. Now, it's been rumored for weeks that Smith, the number two player in the world, would leave the PGA Tour following the footsteps of Phil Mickelson, Brooks Kepka, and others. Live Golf tweeted out a welcome to live for Cameron Smith as well as the other golfers that have been mentioned as joining the tour. All right, let's welcome in golf analyst Kyle Porter, also from the First Cut podcast. Kyle, first of all, get your reaction to the number two golfer in the world leaving the PGA Tour to join Live Golf. Yeah, it's not super surprising based on all the information that we've sort of been hearing and, and had over the last couple of weeks. Uh, this is a blow to the PGA Tour. I mean, this is the... Um, it's not the biggest name that Liv has scored from the PGA Tour. You got Phil Mickelson, Brooks Kepka, Bryson DeChambeau, Dustin Johnson. Those are bigger names. But it's probably the guy that was playing the best when he switched tours, right? When he went from the PGA Tour uh, to, to Live Golf, uh, to the Live Golf League, whatever we're calling it. I don't know that they've actually settled on a name, but uh, it's a big deal, uh, JSL, because it represents Live Golf now has. I was kind of I was looking at this earlier today. <clears throat> they've got players that have won 12 of the last 24 major championships, right? So you've got Cam Smith, who's the reigning open champion. You add in Phil, who won the PJ last year. Brooks has four in the last five years. Patrick Reed, Sergio Garcia, uh, and Dustin Johnson. And you've got half of the last uh, 24 major wins represented in your league. Whatever you want to say about Live Golf and the PGA Tour, that's significant. That's a big deal. And to add somebody who's not only the reigning Open champion, but also the reigning Tournament of Champions winner and the reigning Players champion, the PGA Tour's flagship event, uh, this is a this is a loss for the PGA Tour. There's no other way to look at it. They had that players only meeting a couple weeks back. I mean, Tiger Woods was flown in for it, and the PGA Tour announced changes shortly afterwards uh, that you know kind of moved them a little bit more towards the kind of things that Live Golf is doing. Was there a sense that maybe in making those changes that a guy like Smith might be convinced to stay? Yeah, I think there was, you know, I think Smith was already so far down the road that it was, I mean, he wasn't invited to that meeting, right? According to all the reports on it, he he was the only like top 15 guy that, that wasn't there. I think what's interesting is when, uh, you know, so a couple of things, one, Rory uh, McIlroy said he called him after the open championship to sort of talk about, uh, you know, to congratulate him, obviously Cam Smith beat him uh, at the Open Championship, but then also to just kind of talk through like what's going on in the world of golf right now and to present what, uh, you know, Rory knew was kind of coming down the road there. Obviously, that wasn't enough to convince Cam Smith. But I think the other thing, JSL, is you contrast what Cam Smith uh, still chose to do, which is go to live golf. And you contrast that with uh, what Cam Young, not to be confused with Cam Smith, um, who also finished runner up at the Open Championship behind Cam Smith. Cam Young recently said like, hey, some of the stuff the PGA Tour is, is rolling out and has done is what has convinced me uh, to stay on the PGA Tour because Cam Young also had uh, apparently an offer from Live Golf to go play over there. So I do think that even though the sort of changes that were made on the PGA Tour didn't affect Cam Smith, I think they will keep some of those other top players from moving on uh, from the PGA Tour to live golf here in the near future. Kyle, what about some of the other names on this list? I mean, Harold Varner III, uh, Mark Leishman, Joaquin Neiman, not exactly household names, but not guys that, that people wouldn't recognize if they heard their names. What about the impact of, of those guys bolting for live golf? Well, I, I think what you see here is is you start to see kind of a trend of um, kind of global players going to live golf, right? Cam Smith's Australian. Uh, Joaquin Neiman uh, from Chile, uh, Anurban Lahiri from from uh, India. So you've got this sort of trend where you're, and we've already seen several South Africans go over to, to live golf, some, some Japanese players. So they've become in some ways this sort of global tour, a, sort of a replacement for the old European tour in a lot of ways. I think Neiman is the biggest, if you're just looking at pure PGA Tour losses, I think Neiman is the biggest loss. He's young, he's really good. 
Um, he, he's got a chance to win multiple majors in his career. The rest of these guys, you know, Leishman has obviously had a really strong career. Varner and, and Lahiri and Tringali, they're – they're very, I think, replaceable on the PGA Tour, even though you and I know who they are. I don't know that the common fan is not going to a tournament or not tuning in now because, you know, Anurabhan Lahiri and Cameron Chingali are, are, are not are not playing on the PGA Tour. But I, I do think the Neiman one, again, you know, he it's interesting. He's close to Sergio Garcia. So there was a tie there already uh, between Garcia and Liv Golf. And, and you start to add up all of these international players that are going over and and you've got a little bit of a kind of international versus American split, not completely. Obviously the guy leading the charge on the PGA tour is, is not an American. It's Rory McIlroy. Uh, but you do have a little bit of that split. And I think that's concerning if you're the PGA tour that you start to lose some ground globally. And then all of a sudden does Hideki Matsuyama eventually go? Does Adam Scott eventually go? You know, guys like that that are uh, that are also a big deal to the PGA Tour. Yeah, you wonder what the trickle-down effect would be as we kind of uh, head into the offseason a little bit. Uh, Kyle, you know, you mentioned, is it Live Golf? Is it Live Golf Tour? I mean, they're, maybe they're still trying to decide on a name. One thing they have decided on is that they want their golfers as part of the official world golf rankings. Uh, they've made that application. Is there anything that you can tell us about that? Are they Are they succeeding in trying to to get their golfers ranked or is that kind of still a situation that's still in flux yeah you know peter dawson who's kind of the chair of the owgr the official world golf rankings board uh talked about this recently and he didn't he was pretty tight-lipped on it you know he, he didn't say a lot i think they're going to go through the sort of vetting process that every tour goes through um when they're going to get um, official world golf rankings points. You know, every tour that is created, Live Golf is not the first tour to ever be created, even though they, they sort of uh, like to purport that at times. Uh, other tours have been created even over the last 10 or so years, and there's a very long vetting process, and you have to check a lot of boxes. The problem for Live Golf right now is they don't check some of those boxes. They don't have cuts. Uh, they have 54 whole events. There's a bunch of stuff that there's been exceptions made, but they've got a lot of unchecked boxes that I think could be problematic for them uh, for getting OWGR points in the future. And then the biggest thing is, listen, like the 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 entities that are voting on this that make up the board of the OWGR are the PGA Tour, the European Tour, DP World Tour, and then the four major championship um, organizations, the USGA, Augusta National, uh, the RNA, and, and the PGA of America. And... and they all six of those entities have been obviously the PGA Tour has been outspoken, but you know the other entities as well. You, you, I was at the Open Championship this summer. The RNA is not real happy about Live Golf, so are they going to vote to give Live Golf OWGR points and potentially open the floodgates for more uh, top players to go over, knowing that they'll still be able to get into major championships? I think that is going to be fascinating. I think ultimately. That is also going to end in a lawsuit, maybe even a bigger lawsuit than what we're seeing right now between the PGA Tour uh, and, you know, seven of these live golf guys that have gone over. So I, it's certainly something to keep an eye on. And to me, it's the it's the biggest inflection point of this entire thing is what happens with the OWGR points uh, over the next six months to a year. Uphill battle remains for Live Golf. One thing is for sure, they have the number two ranked player in the world now joining their tour in Cameron Smith. Kyle Porter, golf analyst, CBS Sports HQ, joining us to discuss that here on HQ. Great stuff, Kyle. Uh, six golfers uh, joining the Live Tour, named golfers. Cameron Smith, obviously the highest ranked. He is number two in the official world golf rankings. Joaquin Neiman, Harold Varner the third, Cameron Tringali, which we knew coming into the day, but he was leaving Mark Leishman and Anwar Bandelkiri, also set to join live golf officially as of Tuesday. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.